Shabbat Shalom. I just want to welcome everyone to the Sabbath Day Conference Call. And this is Barbara serving as your host today, and Brother Dan is here as your co-host. He has a special presentation for you. Uh, welcome, Brother Dan. All right. Well, thank you, Barbie. I'm uh, glad to be able to join you and um, your uh, audience uh, this uh, this day for this uh, relatively sh short presentation uh, with regards to Lunar Sabbath Truth, uh, which I believe is hidden in the biblical start of the Omer Counts of Pentecost. And the foregoing is based on five basic premises. And number five, no man has the authority to add or take away from God's word. Deuteronomy 4.2 and Deuteronomy 12.32, including when the Omer count starts. The Omer count must begin when God says it begins, which is on the day after the first day of unleavened bread or the 16th of the month uh, on the Feast of First Fruits, and that's found in Leviticus 23.11, which we'll look at uh, more closely in just a second. In Leviticus 23.15, the first thing Israel was told to do is to count to Pentecost, and, and that's to begin by counting seven Sabbaths complete, or seven uh, complete weeks. From the day that they waved the first fruits of the barley harvest before Yahweh, <clears throat> which was on the 16th of Nisan. Now Leviticus 23.15 says, you shall count for yourselves on the day after the Sabbath, or the day after the 15th, which is the 16th, from the day when you brought in the sheath of the wave offering, there shall be seven complete Sabbaths. Leviticus 23, verses 19 to 11 says, then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, speak to the sons of Israel, say and say to them, when you enter the land which I am going to give you, and reap its harvest, and you shall bring in the sheep, the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord for you to be accepted on the day after the Sabbath, or 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 the sixteenth. The priest shall wave it. Next, it would be helpful to view. Leviticus 23.11 in the Septuagint version to be sure which day is being referred to when it says on the day after the Sabbath in Leviticus 23.11 and 15. So Leviticus 23.11 in the Septuagint version, uh, which is a translation of Hebrew to, uh, to Greek in about 250 BC, says the following, and he shall lift up the sheath of the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow or the day after of the first day, and that is the first day of unleavened bread, which is on the 15th, the priest shall lift it up. <clears throat> no, most, if not all of our English translations of this verse say, quote, the day after the Sabbath, end quote. While the 15th is a Sabbath, because it's the first day of unleavened bread, the primary reference to the phrase the day after is to the second day of unleavened bread, which is the 16th. <clears throat> the command to start counting the Omer is referring to the Feast of First Fruits or the 16th of Nisan, known as the second day of unleavened bread. Israel <clears throat> did, did as the Lord commanded when they entered the land under Joshua's leadership. They waved the sheath of barley first roots on the 16th, and that can be uh, found in Joshua chapter 5, verses 10 to uh, 12. After the waving of the first fruits of the land, that very day, the manna stopped. The very day it began 40 years earlier 
on the 16th of the second month after leaving Egypt. You can read that in Exodus chapter 16. The 16th of Nisan has been observed as the beginning of the Omer count for thousands of years. If anyone should know when the beginning of the Omer count took place, it would be the first century Jewish historian Josephus. Let's see what the first century Jewish horse, uh, historian Josephus, who lived from 37 AD to 100 AD, wrote. He said, but on the second day of unleavened bread, which is the 16th of the month, they first partake of the first fruits of the earth. For before that day, they do not touch them. They do not touch them as saying that they do not eat of them. And you can find that <clears throat> quote in William Winston's translation, which I've noted below. <clears throat> it is called the day of first fruits, not only because it is uh, the first fruits of the barley harvest in the natural, but also because it is a type and shadow of Yeshua's resurrection from the dead. 1 Corinthians 15, 20 tells us, but now Christ has been risen from the dead, the first fruits of those who are asleep. Next, let's consider what a generic biblical week looks like. And that is defined in, as I indicated earlier, eight different verses being six work days followed by a seventh day Sabbath. <clears throat> so I made up the following chart below that shows six work days of every week is followed by a seventh day Sabbath. And uh, so that's a generic biblical week. And uh, let's, uh, let's consider the scriptures tell us with few exceptions in eight different uh, scriptures that almost all of the biblical week of six work days followed by the seventh day Sabbath is followed by the seventh day Sabbath. Also, with few exceptions, the seventh day of the week is always followed by the first day of a new week. Likewise, with few exceptions, the first day of a new week is always preceded by the seventh day of the previous week. I don't think that most would disagree with this fact. Next, let's consider the implications of this simple truth on the 2024 Jewish calendar below, which many believers, including most Messianic believers, follow today as it relates to the feast days and the so-called Seventh-day Saturday Sabbath. As we look at this calendar, Remember that to uh, scripturally identify the first day of the week is to be able to scripturally identify the biblical seventh-day Sabbath. The commandment to count the Omer reveals both the true and the false Sabbath. So in front of us, we're looking at the month of April 2024, which was just last month. And as we look down this, we can see on the 24th of April of this Gregorian calendar, we're going to see that this is where Judaism and Messianic Judaism begin the Omer count. I have it circled above. It says day one, Omer day one. This is the beginning of the Omer count, which is correct according to the scripture, because the previous day is, uh, the though, though they don't have it marked, is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. 
And then the day before that, on the 22nd, or Nisan 14, would be the day that the crucifixion took place in the first century. But anyway, let's return to look at the 24th here. You'll see that I have circled Nisan 16. This is the day that Josephus confirmed was the, the beginning of the Omer count. So I have down here, I have it marked. First day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, sixth day, seventh day. And then on the first uh, of the Gregorian calendar, which is May 1, would be the beginning of the second week of the Omer count. But um, so let's, uh, let, I'm going to leave this up here as I uh, continue to share some things about this calendar that are quite significant. Um, a careful study of the above Jewish Messianic calendar for the secular month of April 2024 reveals both the true and the false Sabbaths in the same week. The 24th of April <clears throat> is the 16th of Abib, or slash Nisan, <clears throat> on the lunar solar calendar. The 16th of Abib slash Nisan is the beginning of the Omer count. This is what the scripture clearly shows. <clears throat> the start of the Omer count begins the counting of seven complete uh, Sabbaths or seven complete weeks. Every new biblical week must begin with the first day. The 16th of Nisan is the first day of a new week beginning the count of seven Sabbaths or weeks complete. Does everyone see that? The day preceding the first day of the Omer count has to be the seventh day of the previous week. The seventh day of every week is the biblical seventh-day Sabbath. Yet on the solar-only Gregorian calendar, it is claimed that Saturday is the Sabbath, but Saturday is the fourth day of the week, as you see that I have marked. It is not the seventh day of the week, except on the Roman Gregorian calendar, which is not the biblical calendar, because the biblical calendar, as we have seen in Genesis, is made up of the sun and the moon and the stars. The first day of the new week is on the 16th. Saturday is the fourth day of the week, not the seventh day of the first day of a new Omer week. The, because the first day of the new Omer week is the 16th. This is according to Leviticus 23, 11, and 15, which we looked at earlier. Therefore, that, mean, that means that the, that the day preceding the 16th is the 15th. Therefore, the 15th is the biblical seventh day of the preceding week. It is the true weekly seventh-day Sabbath. That is when Leviticus 23, 11, and 15 says, the day after the Sabbath, it is referring to the day after the weekly Sabbath, not the feast of unleavened bread. Unleavened bread is never referred to as a Sabbath, even though unleavened bread can be considered Sabbath-like in some respects. It is never referred to as a Sabbath or Ha Shabbat. It is referred to by a different name, which we will examine a little later. The day after the so-called Saturday Sabbath is the fifth day of the week, not the first day. 
<clears throat> the first day begins on the 16th. There cannot be two seventh-day Sabbaths and two first days of the week. The first day of a new week cannot be on Sunday the 28th any more than Saturday the 27th can be the seventh day Sabbath. The scriptures tell us that the 16th is the first day of the Omer count, the beginning of a new week of seven weeks complete. Whose testimony are we going to believe, tradition or scripture? Neither can there be two seventh-day Sabbaths, the Saturday, the 27th, and Tuesday, uh, the 15th, which is the day preceding the first day of the Omer count on the 16th, on the lunar solar calendar. Remember that the lunar solar calendar is the creation calendar of Genesis 1, not the Roman Gregorian calendar, which didn't, was not even in existence in Genesis chapter 1. <clears throat> the overcount, by definition, has to begin on the first day of a new week. It has to contain seven days. What day precedes or comes before the first day of any new week? It can be none other than the seventh day of the preceding week. The seventh day of every week is the weekly Sabbath, which is always the falls on the 15th. An honest thinking Saturday Sabbatarian at this point might say to themselves, Houston, we have a problem. Saturday Sabbatarians have a problem because the so-called Saturday Sabbath falls on April the 27th, which is the fourth day of the Omer week, which began on the 16th on the biblical lunar solar calendar. Weekly Sabbaths do not fall on the fourth days of the week. The day preceding or coming before the 15th of Abib slash Nisan is the first day of the week of the Omer count. And it has to be the, 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 day, the preceding day has to be the seventh day Sabbath, which is in April, which in April 2024 20, is the 15th of Nisan on the lunar solar calendar. This makes the weekly uh, Sabbaths in that month, the 8th, the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th. It is God's word which establishes the 16th or the Feast of First Fruits as the first day of the first week of the Omer count. Seven days from the 16th is the weekly Sabbath or the 22nd or the end of the first Sabbath complete. Therefore, Saturday cannot be the biblical Sabbath. This, in my opinion, is worthy of serious study. We must be like Bereans that are told that they were, are, were, more, were more noble in Acts chapter 17, verse 11, because they searched the scriptures for themselves. Well, so uh, it's worthy of search that lest we be found to be unwittingly bearing false witness against God's word. There cannot be two seventh-day Sabbaths and two first days in a week. This is irrefutable. Let's go down a little ways here. Does any week contain two day Sabbaths, two seventh day Sabbaths, or two first days? And the answer is obviously no. So on the top left is the uh, Gregorian dates in April, starting with the 23rd and going through through the 30th. 
And, and the second date given is the dates found on a lunar solar calendar. So the 16th would be the beginning of the Omer count, and the day before would be the true seventh-day Sabbath of the previous week. And so on the 27th, which our, our uh, Gregorian calendars show Saturday as being uh, the Sabbath, it has to be on, yeah, an unbiblical Sabbath because it's the fourth day of the week. And weekly Sabbaths do not fall on the fourth day. They fall on the seventh. And on the 28th is an unbiblical first day of the week. I hope everybody can uh, can see that. <clears throat> the 24th of April is the first day of the Omer week, which is the 16th on the lunar solar calendar. That makes the 27th of April the Four day week, fourth day of the week, since the first day of the Omer count fell on the 24th of April, or the 16th day on the lunar solar calendar. The seventh day of the first com completed week of the Omer count falls on April 30th or the 22nd on the biblical lunar solar calendar according to God's reckoning. Yet, Saturday Sabbatarians would have us believe that the weekly Sabbath falls on the fourth day of the week or the 27th of April, whose testimony and Omer count are we going to believe, God's or the tradition of men? Leviticus 23.11, I'd like to bring that up again. It says, he shall wave the sheath before the Lord for you to be accepted on the day after the Sabbath. In the in Hebrew, it's Ha Shabbat. The priest shall wave it. Ha Shabbat in this verse refers to the weekly Sabbath of the fifteenth. Now, in Leviticus twenty three fifteen, it says, "You shall also count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, Ha Shabbat again, from the day when you brought in the sheath of the wave offering. There shall be seven complete Sabbaths." Ha Shabbat in this verse refers to the weekly Sabbath of the 15th or the seventh day weekly Sabbath before the first day or the 16th of the Omer count, hence the first day of a new week. Some may be thinking that the Sabbath listed in 20, uh, Leviticus 23. 11 and 15 are reference to the annual Sabbath of, of unleavened bread. Unfortunately, the Hebrew does not allow for this understanding for two reasons. The term Hashabbat is a term used exclusively for the weekly Sabbath. It is not a reference to the first day of unleavened bread. <laughs> the three traveling feasts Unleavened bread, Pentecost, and tabernacles, which are typically referred to as feasts in our English Bibles, are exclusively referred to as hog, spelled three different ways, C-H-H-E or H-A-G or hagog, H-A-G-A-G. -G. This, <clears throat> this word is used 56 times in Hebrew, but never as Shabbats, which is a different Strong's number, H7676, for weekly Sabbath, versus H2282, which is Strong's word for uh, hog, uh, as one of the three traveling feasts. When the Apostle John in 1931 said, that Sabbath, uh, Shabbaton was a high day. It was referring to the weekly Sabbath, not a reference to unleavened bread. It was considered a high day because the feast of unleavened bread fell on that weekly Sabbath that year as it does every year. The lunar solar calendar is a fixed calendar unlike the solar 
only calendar in common use today whereby the weekly Saturday Sabbaths float from year to year in relation to the fixed feast days and the lunar solar fixed Sabbaths. God's tamper-proof calendar in the heavens. Exodus 31, 13. But as for you, speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You shall surely observe my Sabbaths, for this is a sign, H226, or oath, which means a beacon or appearing. That's a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord who sanctifies you. A sign is typically something that can be seen like a rainbow. What might be the signs of the biblical weekly Sabbaths? The signs are the moon quarter phases. And uh, we'll see that here. Here's a generic lunar solar tamper proof calendar of a non-specific month which aligns with the moon's faces. In Psalm 19, verse 2, it, we're told that the heavens declare the glory of God. Indeed, they do. The heavens declare, or the moon faces declare the Sabbath. That's why we're also told that night on the night reveals knowledge. What signs, if any, are found with Saturday Sabbaths? There are none. Assembling every seven days does not constitute a sign. Sabbaths look no different than any other day. Saturday, Saturday, uh, Saturday Sabbaths look no different than any other day. Finally, careful observation of, April, of April's Gregorian calendar above does not indicate that seven Sabbaths complete were ever counted or noted on the calendar. There are no notations of the first, second, or third uh, weeks having been completed on the calendar. The only thing that shows on the Gregorian calendar is that 50 days were counted. So traditionally, when 49 days or seven times seven for seven weeks are reached, those following a Saturday Sabbath usually proclaim the seven Sabbaths are now complete. But that is just a religious sleight of hand. We are commanded to count seven Sabbaths or seven weeks complete and then to number 50 days to arrive at the true day of Pentecost. And for those that would look to traditional um, translations, uh, they uh, may not see that because traditional translations are not as clear as they could be. Look up the uh, Fenton Farrar translation and you will see exactly uh, why uh, I uh, make this statement. To count seven Sabbaths complete, you must start by counting seven biblical Sabbaths on a lunar solar calendar not counting an unbiblical first day, which in some cases would be Sunday, on a secular solar calendar. Perhaps the counting of seven Sabbaths complete is purposely avoided by Judaism and Messianic Judaism because in doing so they would likely expose the false biblical Sabbaths they are following. Starting the Omer count, of seven weeks complete on the Feast of First Fruits is only the first step at arriving at the true day of Pentecost. Judaism only counts 50 days, not seven uh, weeks complete. In closing, I'd like to quote Winston Churchill, who says, men occasionally stumble over the truth, but most of them pick 
up themselves and hurry off as nothing ever happened. Dear reader and listener, let's not let the above be said of us. And for more information, the reader is directed to lunarsabbathday.com. Thank you for your time.